Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyami Menachah Isayin Beis. We begin on the second line off the top. Koitrin mipnei anatiyos umipnei beis ha'evel umipnei beis ha'meder. Typically, although we do not harvest our grain before, right, prior to harvesting the Omer, but there are some exceptions. For instance, if it's in order to alleviate, uh, you know, crowding, uh, a kilayim, a mixture between species, between the... Uh, you know the grain and the uh, the trees, so you have to eradicate the uh, the kalim. So that type of uh, cutting is not considered harvesting. Likewise, to make room for the mourners, or for the students to learn. My time, why is this okay? The Torah when stipulating the um, prohibition of harvesting prior to Eimer stipulates Ketzirchem, personal harvest. That's not allowed. Well, like Ketzir Mitzvah, as opposed to when it's for a mitzvah purpose. Removal of Kalayim to enable learning or another mitzvah. Although you can harvest in these cases, but you shouldn't make them into proper bundles. Rather, um, you leave them until, uh, you know, tie them later. Why? My time. The Kamu de Afshalit Archinan. As much as we can avoid and sort of um, deviate from the norm, we're meant to. And then Farshim explained, it's meant to show, to highlight the fact that this is not really, not really typically allowed. Right? It's only for exceptional cases, so we want to highlight that point. To avoid any misunderstanding, any misconception. And that's what we do in, in an incomplete fashion, as untied bundles to show that this is not you know, the regular harvest. Mitzvah Ideally, the Omer is meant to be brought from Kama, from standing grain. You're meant to cut it for the sake of the Omer. But otherwise, if you can't find you know, you can take it off the shelf. How do we know this is true? The Pasuk says, Vim takriv minchas bikurim, when you will bring the mincha. Ove, right? Kali vaish, geras kam. Takriv. Once again, we repeat the word takriv. Takriv as minchas bikurecha. We learn from the extra takriv that even if it's less than ideal, it still passes. Tanar aban vim takriv minchas bikurim. Matam aloy marim. What's the point of saying takriv? And takriv again. What's the point of repetition? The answer is, there's the optimal. Then you have the b'diavet. Uh, Ideally, you're meant to bring it from kama. You're meant to cut it for the sake of the oimer. What if he doesn't have access to that type? Can he bring from you know cut bundles? Takriv. That's why the Torah repeats takriv to say even that's okay. Another application for takriv, all types of you know b'diavets. Levisha mitzvah lavim in alach. Ideally, you should have fresh grain, as the pasuk says, caramel, right? Rach mole, soft, plump. Umenayin shile matzav alach. What if he doesn't have moist and fresh material? Yavim in ayav should bring dried up material. Tamaloi mar takriv. Once again, even that's allowed. Avrach. Another application is takriv. Levisha mitzvah say looks by light. Ideally, you should be cutting it the night. Right prior to bringing the Eimer. What if he cuts it during daytime? Does it work? What about if it's Shabbos? Can you cut it on Shabbos? So Takriv tells us all these things. Takriv Koshu, you can bring even bundles. Takriv means Mikal Maki, even if you have to import the, you know, the, the barley from a distance, a place far from Yushalayim. Which makes it less fresh or whatever, that's also fine. Takriv means a filo Shabbos. The time is not an issue. Even on Shabbos, you bring it and you do the malacha associated with it because it's a, um, an obligatory public carbon. Takriv means in all situations, and even Takriv, even if the material becomes tame or the kahanama tame, 
the mitzvah so Aymer overrides that consideration as well. So bottom line is, from the word takrit, from that repetition, we learn all these things. Even if it's less than ideal, less than optimal, you proceed. Next time we kash. The mission learns. The mission teaches that although ideally the mitzvah involves sira by night, between 15th and 16th of Nisan, and then it's offered the next day in the Mizbeach, but if you do it during daytime, it's kash. That's not. We have a mission in Masechah's Megillah, which indicates that it's absolute nighttime only. What do you do at night? Which mitzvahs? A nighttime mitzvahs? Cutting of the Aymer. And for burning the fats in the um, parts of the carbonates, you can do it during nighttime. Is that a So this is the other uh, rule. There are two separate distinct time frames, daytime and nighttime. In fact, a mitzvah which is meant to be done during daytime, you can do it throughout the entire day. But no, not past the day. Rashi says, for instance, regarding karbonis, you have the shechita, you have the zrika, which is meant for daytime. As the Pasuk says, karbonis are meant for daytime. On the other hand, mitzvahs which are meant for nighttime, you can do it throughout the entire night. Like burning of the fats, like ktsira sa'ima. So now the Mishnah presented two categories of mitzvahs, daytime mitzvahs, nighttime mitzvahs. Let's make a correlation. Katani, Laila Dumi The Mishnah seems to compare the nighttime, you know, events to the daytime events. Ma diyayim, belayla, just like daytime mitzvahs cannot be done at night. For instance, shechita, zrika, if you do it at night, it's possible. After layla, we have namidloy, let's assume. Likewise, regarding nighttime mitzvahs, like Sirius Oimah, you do it by day, it's possible. So the Mishnah Megillah seems to say that Tzir Sa'ima by day is possible, whereas the Mishnah by Yasa Manachos says clearly otherwise. Nik Tzavayim is kasha, I'm a rabbi like kasha, here's the answer. It's a machlaikis ta noim. Ha Rebbe, our Mishnah in Manachos that allows daytime for Tzir Sa'ima, that's Rebbe Shita. But ha, the Mishnah Megillah which says only nighttime, Rabbi Lezer B'Shem, it's going like him, the Sanyo. As we find in the following b'risa, that in fact it's a machlekes between these two tanoim. Rebbe says daytime works. Rabbi Lezer Shimon says it must be cut at night. The Sanya. So uh, the Kain was um, involved in doing the um, The Mincha Soimer on the uh, 16th day of Nisan, Vinitmus, and suddenly he realizes it became Tommy. What do we do? Do we keep on going? Well, it depends. Mesha Cheres. If there is, you know, other material available, there are, you know, barley stalks standing in the field, so why not just get uh, proper material instead of doing it Betuma? I'm like, we tell him, listen, hold it. Havi Acheres, Tachtel, let's get uh, some other material to make, uh, make up for this one, to substitute for this one. So clearly, it's daytime. And clearly, you can now cut material for the Aymer. So that's Rabbi Shita. Ktsira, so Aymer by day is okay. But if he doesn't have other material access- accessible, so we just shush him up. We say, listen, Aymer, we tell him, be smart, just keep quiet, don't tell anybody. Rashi explains, we don't want people to realize so that um, they, they don't get the impression. We don't want to get them the false impression that you can do Karbanis Batuma. Not realizing that this is just a, an exception, it's a public carbon. So we don't want to make it public. And we continue with the Yakrava. Divrei, whose opinion is that Rebbe? Clearly, according to Rebbe, Ktsiras Oimer by Yoim is kosher. However, a blessed of Shimon Oimer, no. Unless you use that material, which was cut the previous night, you can't proceed. Because Ktsiras Oimer by Laila is critical. Whether or not you have other material that you can now harvest and access, Oimer Loi, we tell be smart, keep quiet, and let's continue. Proceed with the mincha. Why? Why don't you just go get new material? The answer is you can't. You can't cut during daytime. Which was harvested in the wrong way, in the wrong time, it's possible. Okay, so again, we have an apparent contradiction between our Mishnah Menachis, which clearly says, Niktsar Bayoim is kosher which is Rabbi Shita versus the Mincha M- Mishnah in Megillah, which says, well, nighttime is nighttime only, is Rehazer of Shimon, who says, Tzir must be at night, and only at night. 
Omar Rabba, Bar Bar Chama, Omar Rabbi Yechana. Let me explain to you where Reb Lezer, Reb Shimon is coming from. So Reb Lezer, the son of Reb Shimon, was following his father, Reb Shimon, his father Reb Shimon's Rebbe, who was Rebbe Kiva. Who, as we're going to see in a minute, will have to learn that only nighttime cutting passes. Reb Lezer, Reb Shimon, Bishitas, in accordance with the opinion of Rebbe Kiva, who was the Rebbe of Reb Shimon, who was Reb Lezer, Reb Shimon's father, Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Shalab Amra, his opinion is in line with that opinion as well. This is not. Rabbi Mishnah, Klal Amr Rabbi Kiva presented a rule. Kol Malacha, Shev Shaloy La Soysim Erev Shabbos. So we know that one performs a bris milah even on Shabbos, despite the fact that it involves a malacha, because by Yoyim, I feel like Shabbos, right? It's Deicha Shabbos. What about preparing for the milah? He forgot to bring a knife, all that. I allowed to do those malachis on Shabbos for the sake of Mila? Says Rabbi Kiva, no. That could have been done yesterday. That wasn't critical for today. The, the act of Mila itself must be today, but accessories, preparations, that you can't do today. Too bad, you should have done it yesterday. Call malacha, any form of malacha, she'ev shaloy la soyusim, of Shabbos, that can technically be done in advance before Shabbos, ain't no doichas Shabbos, there's no justification to do it on Shabbos. Now, what about Minchas Oimer? So, there are two parts to Minchas Oimer. There's the Hakrava, which certainly has to be done even if today is Shabbos, right? As we learned before, right? Takrav Dech Shabbos. What about the Tziras Oimer, the cutting, the harvesting? The Savalak Rabbi Shmuel. Now, Rabbi Lezer also follows Rabbi Shmuel, who says, the Amar Tziras Oimer Mitzvah. That clearly, even the harvesting, the Tziras Oimer is considered a Mitzvah. And it's the Shabbos, as we're going to see in a minute. Apparently, the only way to explain, right, the allowance of harvesting the Aymar and Shabbos is because it can't be done, it cannot be done any other time. It must be done tonight and tonight only. Why? Because nighttime Ketzirah is critical. Does that substantiate his, it substantiates his opinion? The Aktiris Aimer is only Kasha at night. Otherwise, why would it be Daicha Shabbos? It could be done a different time. It could be done yesterday, Erev Shabbos during daytime. Apparently, it can't. And we find that Aktiris Aimer is Daicha Shabbos. It's not a Bishmol Aimer. Machorish Rishos of Katsa Rishos. So the Pasuk says, Machorish of Katsa Tishbois. On Shabbos, he meant to uh, keep back, keep away from uh, plowing and from harvesting. Uh, says a Bishmol, the Pasuk here is teaching us that. Only personal malachas are asr, such as plowing. Plowing is always personal. There's no mitzvah ever to plow. So that type of malachas are asr. But, amacharish rishus, just like the plowing described in this pasik, which is asr on Shabbos, that's because it's personal. Afkat rishus, likewise, a harvest. Harvesting is only asr on Shabbos if it's personal, as opposed to a mitzvah harvest, like the, the oimer harvest. Yotzak tiro oimer, she mitzvah, it's a mitzvah. And therefore, even on Shabbos. Now, visakadaitach. Niksar, Shaloi, Kumitzvah Sakasha, if you suggest that even if you harvest in the wrong time, during daytime, it still can pass. So, what justification do we have for doing it on Shabbos? Amai Dechi Shabbos. Why is it Dechi Shabbos? Niksare, matter of Shabbos. Simply do the Ktsiri yesterday before Shabbos. Ella, rather, we see from here, Midi Dechi Shabbos, the fact that Rishmo clearly teaches that Ktsiri is Aimez Dechi Shabbos. Shema mino niktar shalaykum etzvah say pas evidently you cannot do it any other time so that explains Reb Lezer Reb Shimon's sheet again Reb Lezer who was the son of Reb Shimon followed Reb Shimon his father's Rebbe Reb Kippur who says that only a type of malacha which is inevitable for Shabbos which you have to do today can you do it on Shabbos and we find that according to Bishmoel Tzirah Sa'imah falls into that sort of category is Daicha Shabbos. Apparently the only time to do it is today, the night of Shabbos. As opposed to Rebbe who says, well, you can do it even during daytime. Ask the Gemara, but Rebbe himself was also on this track. He was also a Talmud of Rabbi Shimon and presumably would also be aligned with this whole opinion. If Rebbe left Talmud to Rabbi Shimon, who was Rebbe not himself a Talmud of Rabbi Shimon? In which case, the only way to justify a malach on Shabbos, the, the precondition is that it has to be done today, 
So, if according to Rebbe, it could be done yesterday during daytime, so then why are you doing it on Shabbos? And we find that Rebbe followed Rebbe Shimon, he was a Talmud of his. The Rebbe left Talmud of Shimon, but Tani, you have a price. I'm a Rebbe, she knew, Lamed in Torah. It's Rebbe Shimon, but Tekoya, when we were studying Torah by Rebbe Shimon in the town of Tekoya, we did the following thing, which is really related to a different discussion, but in any case, he. Uh, we would bring for him the, um, the oil and the towel to use you know, when he was bathing from the yard to the roof from the roof to the storage, the backyard and so on and so forth until we reached the destination which was the spring where we bathed okay, it's a uh, different, you know but the point here is he clearly was a Talmud of so how could it uh, fit with what he's saying here you can do Ketir Sayyim by day. So why is it Dechah Shabbos? The answer is like this. Even if it could be done during daytime, but ideally, you do it at night. And that's the, the way you do it properly, right? And that in itself is a, an important enough factor to allow it to be done on Shabbos. It's called Chaviva Mitzvah B'Shat. Doing a mitzvah in its proper way, in its proper time, is dear. That dearness component <laughs> allows for Daicha Shabbos. So, either the Rab Shimon, he was like the other Rab Shimon, the son of Rab um, Shimon. By the way, come take a look. Take a close look at what happens every week, every Shabbos in the Beis Hamidah. So, they bring the Talmud, right? The Shach, the Zer. That, you gotta do it. It's essential. It's part of today's schedule. But what about completing the Akrova, like the Evarim, the Pedarim, burning the fat? No. Wait till uh, after Abdullah. We learned before that. Those can be done even during nighttime. So, what justification do we have for doing it on Shabbos? The answer is, it's the right time. Chaviva mitzvah b'shat. Boyre, come take a look how important it is to do a mitzvah properly. Come a chaviva mitzvah b'shat. How dear is the performance of a mitzvah at its right, correct time? Shari hekta chalom mevar. Look, the burning of the fats and the limbs of the you can do it after Avdallah throughout the whole night. Instead of waiting until nighttime, they did it during Shabbos as well. Why? Because it's uh, part of the Karim Tav. It's, it's Chaviv Mitzvah Shata. No, so likewise, when it comes to Ktsira, so even though technically you can get away with doing it during daytime, do it after Shabbos. Chaviv Mitzvah Shata is an important enough factor to allow it even on Shabbos. Ask the Gemara, okay, but. Let's go back to the other Shita, Reb Lezer, the son of Reb Shimon. He didn't know about this halacha. He didn't know about Chaviva Mitzvah B'Shat. Meaning just because you find that Tzirus Oimah is done on Shabbos doesn't necessarily mean that technically it wouldn't pass if you do it yesterday. It's just that today is the proper time. So there goes our whole arrangement. We were substantiating our blessed Rosh Shita based on the fact that it's done on Shabbos. Inevitably, this is the, the only time to do it. No, maybe it's only because it's the proper time. But really, technically, it's kosher even by day, even Ere Shabbos. Rabbi Lezer, the son of Rosh Hashim, Rosh Hashim Shmile, he didn't know his father's opinion. Oh. So, apparently, he had another way to explain what allows us to complete the offering of the Talmud even on Shabbos? Even though technically you can do it on Shabbos. The reason is, Elishani Asam, there is different Shari, Dach So Shkitas on Shabbos. You already started the process on Shabbos. The Shkita of the Talmud, which is critical for Shabbos, that sort of opened the door. It sort of allow, allows us to process the entire carbon on Shabbos. Because this carbon was already allowed on Shabbos. Right, so it's, it's in combination. It's combined with this factor as well. Ready, start it, you finish it. Um, as opposed to Ksira Sa'imara. You have no reason, no justification. Just do it yesterday. Do it Arab Shabbos if you can get away with doing it that way. No, the Rebbe Yachanami Dach Sashita Shabbos. What does Rebbe do with this counter argument? The reason why the uh, Talmud is done is because you already started the process on Shabbos. Eloka Sava Rebbe Ksira Sa'imara Ladachi Shabbos. Wow. So now we're switching our whole understanding of Shita's Rebbe. 
inevitably, Rebbe will hold. Rebbe who says that you can do Ketira by day, he holds that you can't do it on Shabbos. Because it's not critical. There's no reason to do it. Really, if a lie, it's not going to be done on Shabbos. But none. What about all those Mishnayas? Remember in the beginning of our parable we discussed Shabbos harvest of the Eimer. They hold Echad Shabbos, Echad Chal, whether it's on Shabbos, there you go, on Shabbos, or during the weekday. You do it the same way, Mishal HaShayabo, you bring it from Spri Sa'ah. Well, that's like Rebbe, it's not going like Rebbe, he also can't do it on Shabbos. What about Echad Chal, they say Echad Shabbos, Echad Chal, Mishloisha, you do it with three people, Mishloish Kubit, Mishloish Magal, three baskets, three sickles. You do it on Shabbos? Ah, the like Rebbe, not like Rebbe. What about next part of the Mishnah? Well, Shabbos Yom Lem, Shabbos Zu, on Shabbos he calls out, should I do it on Shabbos? And I say, yeah. Again, the Likrev, it's not going like Rebbe. So at this point, we basically have a double Machlekes, which are really inter- which is really, which are really intertwined. One is, ideally you meant to do Ktsir Saim at night. What about daytime Ktsir? Reb Lezer, Reb Shema says, nothing to it. In fact, he says that's why you, at all you can do it on Shabbos. Because there's no other time. Versus Rebbe who says you can do it during Tate time too. And that's exactly why it's not the Echa Shabbos. Okay, well let's take a look at our Mishnah again. Which says, Niktsar Bayim Kasher. Daytime Tira works. And in the same breath, Vedo Echa Shabbos. <laughs> How does this work together? Man Shabbos Le Dama Niktsar Bayim Kasher. Who's the one who says daytime works? That's Rebbe. And the Mishnah clearly says, Uktani, even on Shabbos, Deichas HaShabbos. My love, Tziru, assuming the harvest is Deichas HaShabbos. That's a problem. No, the harvest is not Deichas HaShabbos, as we explained. We're talking about the actual offering, the burning of the Avalak Tziru, but not the actual harvesting. Vatani, we have a price that Rebbe himself is talking that even uh, everything is Deichas HaShabbos. Rebbe Yagmer. So after the... Uh, Detailed, you know, presentation of all the various Yom Tavim, the Pasuk concludes with a wrap-up. Rabbi Aymer, my Daber, my my Adi Hashem, Obnei Yisrael. What's the point of this sort of repetition? The answer is like this. The Torah now is equating all the Karbanis, all the Karba, all the Yom Tavim, one to another. At this point, all we know is that the Karban Tamid and the Karban Pesach can be brought even on Shabbos. Because we have the Lashon Mayadeh in its right time, irrespective of Shabbos. And we learn, even on Shabbos, but Mayadeh teaches us, even if it's Betum. What about other Karbanis, public Karbanis? Do they also have this allowance of Shabbos and Tumah? So this Pasuk equates all the, uh, you know, the, the Musaf and all the Karbanis, in its right time, even on Shabbos, etc. Now what about items which are not uh, mentioned in, that, in those Pesukim, like the Omer, the, the Shtei Alechem, which are mentioned elsewhere, Menai and Lorabis. How would you know to include, to cover even the Omer, the Mechas Omer, Vakarav Imai, and the Karbanas that come with it, the Keves, Shtei Alechem, two breads on Shvuiz, Vakarav Imai, and the, um, the uh, sheep that come with them? Can you do these on Shabbos? Can you do the Shtei Alechem on Shabbos? The Omer on Shabbos? Tamal Omer, Vaidava Moshe. Oh! Comes that passage that we mentioned before and says, bundling together, you know, all these items as well, which are stated over there. Now is establishing one set time for all, which means to say they all have the same allowances that they have and to. Now let's analyze the price we discussed. Having this ability of overriding, you know, Shabbos and the Omer, Lamayad. With respect to what element are we talking about? What element of the process? Ilayim are we speaking about offering it on the Mizbeach? You're doing that on Shabbos, fine. But Shtei Alechem, Bnei Akrov and Inu? What do we have offering of the Shtei Alechem as a carbon that goes straight to the Kayan? Bnei Akrov and Inu, El Pshit El Tchina, Varkada. Clearly we're not speaking about the Akrov, we're speaking about the preparation. The grinding of the flour, the sifting of the Shtei Alechem, that's going to be the Echa Shabbat. So correspondingly, when we speak about the same regarding the Omer in this price of the Kavasaga be Omer. Apparently, we're not speaking only about the Akrova, we're speaking about the preparatory acts, the Ktsira, harvesting the, uh, the flower, harvesting the grain. And we clearly see that it's the Echashav, the Kodachis Hashambas. And this is who speaking? Who's speaking in this price? Look at the beginning of the price, this is Rebbe. So, even according to Rebbe, it's the Echashavas. 
That flies in the face of our earlier conclusion. I'm going to Rebbe, since it can be done by day, it's not like a Shabbos. Lies. No. Says the Gemara. No. Certainly the Ketir of the Ketir is not like a Shabbos because you have, a, you have an alternative you can do it during daytime. The Bryce which says it is like a Shabbos, that's speaking about the Akrava because it's inevitable it has to be done today. Uh, regarding Shtei Alechem, we're speaking about the baking of Shtei Alechem which can only be done today. Why? The Kasava Rebbe, because Rebbe holds Tanar Makadish. The oven, which was used for baking of the Shtei Alechem, had a status of a Klish Shores, a holy vessel, which imparts holiness onto its content. And now the bread attain a higher level of Kedusha, they become inherently Kedush, Kedusha Gof, which necessitates Shabbos baking. Why? The Avala Mi Esma, if I'll do it yesterday, once the bread acquired that higher level of Kedusha, they cannot be left overnight. They become possible. We know Lina, right? If Silla Belina. That explains why the baking has to take place today on Shabbos. So again, only uh, a form of activity which is uh, vital for today, like Akrov of the Aymer, like Afi of Shte'alecha must be done today, but otherwise, I'd say Ksiris Aymer, according to Rabbi, you could do it yesterday, because Bayayim is Kasha. So one more point now. So you're assuming that Rebbe holds that the, uh, the oven used to bake the Shtei Alechem as Makadosh the bread. By the time we have a bride, so which seems to say that the Hakrov of the uh, accompanying sheep that come along with the bread, they do the trick. Kivsi Atzeres, a Makadosh, the Shalachem of the the Shchita of the Kivsi Atzeres, they are Makadosh the bread. Ketzad, for example. Only if it's done properly, right? Of course. Shachton Lishmon. Shchita on the Kvasim took place Lishmon. With the right intention, is, you know, in mind, and likewise, as Rika was done the Shmon, Mazarik done the Shmon, you got a winner. Kiddush Alech on the bread is Kaddish, but it was Shachtan Shaloy the Shmon, right? Or Mazarik done Shaloy the Shmon. He did both Shaloy the Shmon. Look, Kiddush Alech it doesn't work. What if it's one on one? Shachtan the Shmon, the Shchita was done the Shmon, having in mind, you know, the Shlomim for the sake of Shlomim. Mazarik done Shaloy the Shmon, and the Rika was done for the sake of Oila. So one in, one out. So that's the effect that it has in the bread. In and out. Halacham Kaddish, and Kaddish. Halacham is only partly Kaddish, as we learned way back when. Divi Rebbe, Rebbe Shimon Aymer. There's no uh, Kaddish at all generated uh, because it was not a proper process. Loyal and Kaddish, there won't be any Kaddish at Shish Kaddishman. We use Rebbe Shimon, let's both Shkit and Zrika Dom Shimon. Bottom line, you see that the processing of the carbon is what makes the Lacham Kaddish, not the, not the oven, as we had proposed. Amar Rahmar Yitzchak, for sure it's the oven. When we speak about the uh, the kvasim affecting the bread, it's not regarding kedusha. It already has kedusha. It's regarding hukpu. It becomes established. It gets linked to the bread to the to the uh, karbanis. For instance, if something goes wrong with the uh, karbanis, could you switch the breads and attach them to different karbanis? Well, it depends. Hukpu. Once the shchita and the zrika took place, it gets linked with the breads. The breads get linked with the uh, karbanis. Um, and cannot be uh, switched and transferred to other to other carbonates, or not, meaning it all depends on what happened to the um, kvasim, if they were processed properly, then they become hukbu. The breads become connected, hukbu, but otherwise not. So bottom line is, at what point do we do ktsira soimer? The mitzvah is to do it at night, right? Because it's meant to be the same time as... Uh, the uh, Sphira Sa'ima, which uh, certainly starts at night. You have to have full days, full weeks. So the mitzvah is at night. What if you did it by day? According to our Mishnah, it's done during daytime, it's okay. That's like Shitas Rebbe. Versus the Mishnah Megillah, which says nighttime is critical. That's what of Shimon. And really, this links to another question as well. What about Tzira on Shabbos? According to Rebbe, it's not the Shabbos because you have an alternative. You can do it uh, Ere Shabbos. According to Rebbe Shimon, since uh, Shabbos... Uh, Leil Shabbos is the only time that it works. So it's Teich Shabbos. Okay, says the Mishnah. Ve'elu menachos nekmatzis v'shirein l'kihanam. The following is a list of menachos which undergo the act of kmitza, right? The scooping of the uh, portion which meant, is meant for the Mizbeach. And the leftovers, the shirayim, are fed to the kihanam. As follows. Menachas ha'soyles. That's the standard, you know, flour mincha, dough mincha, v'machvas, v'acheshes, the fried menachis, v'achalas, v'rakikin, these are the baked menachis. So these are five um, forms of, uh, you know, do- donated menachis. Mincha as evli even if a guy donates, 
Mechas Nashim of a woman, Mechas Aimer, right? Mechas Chayte, a sinner brings a Mincha. Mechas Knoi, a Mincha that's meant for a, a woman who's a Saita, right? So all these uh, undergo Kmitza uh, with the Kmitza portion presented on the Mizbech and the Shiraim consumed by the Kayana. But, uh, as Rashi points out, Minchas Chayte here is a Minchas Chayte of Yisrael. So that one has kmitza, but a mincha schaita that a, a kayin would bring to atone for his sin, that does not experience kmitza. And the reason is because um, a mincha that a kayin brings is kalal, it's completely burnt in the There's nothing for the kayhanim to eat in that. So just like if a kayin donates a mincha, it says kalal tiyah, it's fully burnt, there's no kmitza. Likewise, even a mincha schaita of a kayin does not undergo kmitza. So according to Tanakama, it's a very simple formula. If the Shirayim will be given to the Kayanim, then there's Kmitza to separate the part from the Mizbech, from the part of the Kayanim. But there's nothing going to the Kayanim anyway. It's all burnt on the It's almost like no point of doing Kmitza. Kmitza is not going to be applied to this uh, Mincha. It's fully uh, incinerated on the Mizbech. Rabbi Shimon disagrees. Rabbi Shimon takes exception. Rabbi Shimon, I am Mincha Schoite Shokayan Nekmetzis. Although the Mincha Schoite of the Kayanim is going to be fully colored on the Mizbech, but there's Kmitza. And you burn both parts. The Kayanimetz. Is carved on its own, carved lots. And Shirayim, the left of the Shirayim, carved lots and burn on their own. I'm not Papa. We had a list of different types: soilus, machvas, marcheshes, which we know are comprised of ten units, ten breads, right each. What about the last uh, type, which is chalis rikikin, which are really called ma'afetaner? So the general term for both variations is ma'afetaner. We have two sub, uh, you know, categories. Chalais, which are the more uh, oily, mixed with oil type of uh, bread, and rakikin, which are the uh, sort of dry ones, which are then smeared with oil. So presumably, just like soilus is 10, machvas is 10 breads, machersis is 10, chalais is 10, rakikin is 10. You can have, bring either or, but 10 of each. Can I mix and match? Can I do five chalais and five rakikin? Because after all, they're under the same sort of umbrella, same type. No. Omar Papa Kalecha Desnan, all the items mentioned in the Mishnah, Regarding different types of menachis, answer none. They're all consistently ten menachis each. You can't mix and match. Mike Mash wants to point what's he saying. Who says you can mix and match regarding the mafe taner with its two variations? The Omar Mechza Chalos Mechza Rikikin Yovi can bring you know five Chalos five Rikikin because after all they're the same type, same category. Mash the point of Rabbi is to point out from the mission you can't do that because Chalos and Rikikin are listed together. With solis, machvas, macheshes, uh, which need ten each. Likewise, chalas and rikikin are also ten each, no mixing or matching. Okay, sharing the kehana. Manola. How do we know that the uh, leftover portion of a mincha is given to a kain? What do we mean, says the Gemara? We have the psukim, right? And some add the word manolan again. Manolan? <laughs> Question mark. What do you mean? What do you mean to ask? Where? The chsiva. A mincha where it's, it's stated. Chsiva, so you have it stated in the Pasuk. The likes of like, so the ones that are not uh, clearly, you know, uh, spoken about. Regarding the Shrayim and Tzedekayanim. Chsiva, we have a, another Pasuk which sort of wraps together, bundles together all the monachas. It gives them the same uh, status. Chsiva, v'zoi seres ha-mincha, ha-kareis ibn And the leftovers, when it's seres, the leftovers are given to Tzedekayanim. Many yachlar and rebanam. So what's the question? Answers the Gemara. Yeah, that's wheat, menachis, because those uh, menachis are speaking about wheat, because the five primary menachis are all comprised of wheat. So bochitin, like in barley, I no question regarding wheat menachis. Of course, they're given to the Kayan. My question was regarding a barley mincha like mincha soimer, like mincha soita, which are barley related. Kikim barley and soirin. Ask the Gemara, what do you mean? So, Ba, So, Irin, Nami, even the barley ones, I mean, the Kmetzis, the fact that they undergo Kmetza, indicates to us that um, there's Kmetza, that means the leftovers are for the Kayanim, that's the formula, right? According to Tanakam, at least. But then the Kmetz, the fact that they undergo Kmetza, that's the biggest indicator, that's Shirel, the Kayanim. Says the Gemara, you're right, according to the Rabbanon, you have a point, because the two things are related. I'll leave the Rabbanon. Like, well, I know question regarding the Rabbanon. If there's Kmetza, then the Shirayim go to Kam. Kikim, but my question was regarding Rabbi Shimon, who says it isn't necessarily related. I'll leave the Rabbi Shimon, the Amr who says, Ika mincha, and there is a case of a mincha, like a mincha as chayte of a, of a kain, the mikmitza, although it undergoes kmitza, but it's not consumed by the kayhanim. So now, this is not, as we had in the Mishnah, right? Rabbi Shimon, I'm a mincha as chayte of a kayhanim. 
Nikmetz, although it has Kmitzah, but it's completely incinerated. Kmitz gets burnt on its own Karbat, and the Shrine as well. Shrine Kmitz Matz. So the question now is once we see it's not necessarily linked, so back to the question you have a Minchas Oimer, Minchas Sait, Barley Menachis. Although there is there is kmitza, Rashi brings the pasuk askaras, so there is kmitza. But who's to say that the leftovers will go to the kaim? No, on Rachiska, on Korah, we have another pasuk for that. Pasuk says that the kohanim get leftovers of a mincha, b'chol mincha belula, b'shem a mincha which is mixed with oil, l'chareva or dry with that oil, l'chol b'nei aron tia, the leftovers are granted to the kohanim. Now this is an extra pasuk because we already had the pesukim before teaching us that the leftovers. Of Menachas are, are transferred to the Kehanim. So this is an extra Pasuk to cover these two Menachas that we're looking for. Imeinia Inya, if it's not needed for the standard, Leblula Shalchitin, wheat related, mixed with oil, a standard Menachas, it's not needed for that. So that's a general system. We have an extra Pasuk, we apply it to where it's needed. Tneu Inyan, apply it, Leblula Shalchitin, to a barley uh, mix, mixture, meaning Menachas Oimer. That covers the first part of the Pasuk. Menachas Belula, a barley. A uh, mincha mixed with oil, which is the mincha soimer. Many in chareva shalchitin regarding the second part of the pasuk, chareva dry mincha. It's not needed for the wheat mincha because we already know from before. Apply it to a wheat mincha which is uh, without oil, which is the mincha soita. Sorry, sorry. If it's not needed for the dry wheat, apply it to a dry barley. Tnei uinyan lechareva shalsoimer dry barley, which is the mincha soita, which is made of barley without oil. Okay, so we discover the source that um, teaches us. That the um, just like all the other menachos, the menachos oimer and menachos soita as well, uh, leftovers will be offered to the kohanim despite the fact that they're comprised of a different material, namely barley. All the best to you and atzlochara.